I've been involved with Finger Lake boating for my entire life. My cousin and I used to have a, a 12 foot wooden boat with an 18 horsepower Evan route. We had one of the first water skis on Kuka Lake. No life preservers, no watchers. Absolutely, today we would have been arrested and put in the Yates County Jail. <laughs> and I'm the great-grandson of George W. Hall. From the late 20s until he died in 1939, he built 39 boats. They're actually works of art. This is a non-motorized rowboat. The motor are your hands and your arms, and it just glides through the water. It was 1944. I was a nine-year-old lad. We had our little flotilla. <laughs> a couple of wooden rowboats, traditional cedar canvas canoe, and a sailboat. The sailing caught my fancy the most, and, and all of the boats that we owned were locally made. And the boat's a uh, 1960 Enyan Baltic that we picked up at the factory in 1960. I was 10 years old at the time, and it's been in our family ever since. I've been loving every minute of it. People have nostalgia for the times that they spent in their youth. It's uh, still wonderful to keep in mind, you know, the history of the region and rich variety of boat builders that are in the region. The Finger Lakes are wonderful lakes to boat on. It's a wonderful fishing area, considered the lake trout capital of the world. The Finger Lakes region is unique and special in the, the whole world in the fact that they are moraine dammed lakes. The formation of the Finger Lakes started 350 million years ago. This whole area was a sea. Land was uplifted and eventually rivers formed. Then we had four ice ages gouging out those river valleys, making them wider and deeper. As the ice moved south, it deposited material that dammed the water up, that's a moraine. And now we have the Finger Lakes as a result of that. The commercial navigation of the Finger Lakes was an important uh, factor in the economic development of the entire region. And that entailed the building and the use of steamboats on the various Finger Lakes. Boating on Skinny Atlas Lake, like in most of the Finger Lakes, was commercial by necessity. The highways were just two ruts in the road the only way that you could get around was via boat. The steamboat era started in about the 1820s and lasted through about the 1930s. So the steamboats were a vital part of the transportation as far as moving freight. Steamboats also served as towboats for barges. They prospered with the advent of the winery business and grape growing. The sizes of the steamboat were from 75 feet about 130 feet long. They could hold as many as a thousand passengers. Large groups of people would come from places like Rochester or Syracuse on the train and they would then board one of these boats and they would go around the lake. There were actually 70 steamboat landings. Everybody depended on them. The steamboats played a key role in the development of tourism on the lake. So it was possible to get on the Erie Railroad down in New York, come up to a dock here where they could catch a steamboat to one of the resorts on the lake. There were some beautiful resorts. Uh, some could accommodate as many as 500 guests, and people would come spend a week or two to do that. Uh, those resorts were equipped with small boats, typically uh, wooden rowboats. You also had some increase in the leisure time that most people came into in the late 19th, early 20th century. People were buying shore property or come up here on the weekends and uh, enjoy being on the lake. That's the market that the Pinyan Boat Company was established to support. It was probably the largest of the builders here in the lakes, followed only by Thompson. And then there were smaller production builders uh, throughout the Finger Lakes. We had a lot of shops uh, here engaged in the building of wooden boats, probably through uh, World War II. We're looking at boats supposedly built by my grandfather, near as we can figure, a Charlie Pilgrim boat. There's other, maybe a dozen different people that built boats around Cuca Lake, and there's something similar about most of them together. The bows on the boats are very similar to my grandfather's. I'd say there probably was seven people, all family. It was just a family business. 
Uh, and as I can tell, they sold and built boats from 1914 to 1944. It's about 30 years of boat building. But it sure has been interesting for the last 12 years, finding the boats that might be my grandfather's and bringing them back to life to preserve the history of the Pilgrim family boat business that was in Hammondsport. From what I could figure out, about every 10 miles you could find a boat builder. From the Pilgrims to Ben Reno, the Sutherlands, Probably the most central spot where the trout boats were gathered was at Smoker's Livery, and he had about as many as 30 trout boats available to rent. His livery became so popular that you had to call like two weeks in advance to reserve a trout boat to go out trout fishing. But the boat is very easy to row it had a deep keel, so you almost could row with one hand and it would stay in a straight line. And it was like a feather on the water. Penyan made a lot of boats that were other than power boats, probably best known for their canoes. Still to this day found everywhere and highly desirable. The trout boats and the row boats, the small row boats for fishing, those are the ones you find in everybody's boathouse. Very, very popular and uh, successful models for a long, right to the very end. I think the last production of wood was canoes. When Murray first launched his K Senior, took his wife out for a ride. Well, anyway, they're just going lickety split, just, just, just really sailing. And she said, "Gee, this is like going on a rampage." And she named that rampage. Is that right? Yeah, that's 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 the story I got. The Scandalous Boat Company, noted for building the Lightning, the 19-foot sloop. They also built Comets, Rhodes Bantams, Penguins, Mowers. These are boats that are designed for camp uses to be you know, used as work boats, going back and forth to your camp from wherever. We have a, a reputation of producing high-quality, fine, well-designed boats. And they won worldwide recognition. And that's the way we like to keep it. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about a boat company called Fay and Bowen. They are kind of the holy grail of wooden boating. They go back to 1904, originated as one of the first manufacturers of the internal combustion engine of various designs. In order to market their engines, they came up with the idea of, well, let's put them in a boat. They were built up through 1929. The Fay and Bowen boats are really giant canoes. Their philosophy of the boat was that they did not spare the expense. Uh, they, they went with Cypress with an awful lot of the hulls. I and mean, that's why a lot of those hulls have existed and lasted until this time. The engines in them were gigantic. One that would power a 25-foot boat rated at 12 horsepower, but weighing about 800 pounds, is a sight to see just the engine. They were widely sold throughout the world. Just beautiful things. The cabinetry work inside would rival any fine cabinets in the kitchen. I mean, they were just beautiful detail. It was an age where speed wasn't the big thing. It was the elegance, it was slow speed, launch, go out, your friends or family, have some cocktails, just have a nice day on the water. Boats today, the ones that remain, are probably the most sought after boats. They're now way into the six figures for a good Fay and Bowen. The uh, Thompson Boat Company was founded in 1904. At first it was just building canoes in the hayloft of the farm barn. After World War II, my dad built it up so that by the 1950s there were 250 people working on wooden boats and they were producing several thousands a year. By 1968 they closed the wooden boat production facility. The overall philosophy of the Thompson Boat Company has developed into you know, an everyman boat as opposed to say a Chris Craft would be a Cadillac the Thompson would be a Ford in that everybody with a little leisure time could have a boat and go out fishing or have fun with their family. Penny and boats are really found and known worldwide. One of the things they promoted was that their boats were lightweight, they were easy to handle, easy to put on cars to take them around and brought up around the lakes and outboards in particular as a young guy and uh, always envied the Penny and Swift. All the kids wanted those when I was young because they were the race boats of the time. 
I believe they got that up around 50 miles an hour, was we had a 10 horse Super Hurricane Mercury that my brother got when he was in high school, which for a period of time was the fastest boat on Seneca Lake. It was quick for a little boat. I was 10 years old when I learned to water ski behind this very boat with a 50 horsepower motor. We pulled five skiers with it at one time. Lots of fun. So between the camping, water skiing, swimming, and the boating in general, I had a pretty nice childhood. The notion of having a Finger Lakes Boating Museum took seed uh, back in 1996 with a few interested people up in Penyan. We decided that it shouldn't just be Penyan boats, but uh, ultimately became an interest in Finger Lakes built boats. And in December of 1997, the museum received its provisional charter from the state of New York. For the next several years, the museum searched for a home. Finally, in 2013, Mercury Aircraft a Company here in Hammersport, New York, offered the Boating Museum the former Taylor Wine Company property. And that property consists of 14 acres and 20 buildings. This building alone is 32,000 square feet. The building we're using to store the rest of the collection in is another 30,000 square foot building. So the future of the museum is really exciting. We've got this lovely property to develop into a, a world-class museum. It'll be a great campus when we get it done. The Boating Museum mission is more than just to show what was. Well, it was to preserve the boating history of the Finger Lakes region, to collect and interpret and, and share uh, what we think is a, a wonderful boating heritage uh, here in this 14-county area. We're chartered by the New York State Department of Education. We're considered an educational facility. The education needs to go beyond just the ability to view the artifacts, but uh, to preserve some of the skills that went into creating wooden boats here in the Finger Lakes. It's an active teaching institution to teach the craft of restoration and boat building. It might be a two-day course, it might be a one-day course. The week-long courses, we build boats. Uh, the short courses will do the skills of taking the lines off a boat, or the, uh, teach the skills of lofting those lines. We can do paddle making in short courses. The opportunity to recognize historic boating, not only in Cuca Lake, but the entire Finger Lakes here at this location is just in its infancy and will continue to expand and grow.